Ah, what we're going to learn today is, is I'm not going to show you anything about JavaScript at all. So um, the first thing is um, I went through an exercise here. Um, I work, the, the, the firm that I'm working at right now is Biblioteca. And it says 3M, but it's really Biblioteca because we got bought by 3, uh, Biblioteca bought a 3M business unit. And I went through the exercise of converting this website to be responsive. So I spent days and days of my time doing this. I, I make a change and it looks good here. And then I go, okay, make it smaller and see how it looks. So there's a break somewhere in here, right? Back and forth. Okay, that looks good. And then, oh, there's another break, right? And I do that, and then I go make another change and repeat that process over and over again. And it worked. I, I got my, my job done. But uh, recently, oh, it looks like I might be offline again. Let me just check that. Uh, come on. Let's see. Just give me a second here. We're on, okay. Um, anyway, so somebody sent me a link not too long ago about a new browser that is gonna make that kind of a workflow. If you do that workflow often, it's gonna make that a lot easier for you. This is um, a thing called Blisk, so blisk.io. And what it gives you, it's a Chrome-based browser. So it works exactly the same way as Chrome. You've got all the developer tools and everything. But what you get is, uh, you get two screens side by side, one which is your desktop sized browser and one which is a emulated device. So you can see here I've got the same website up and in the one it's, it's, it's full screen, right? And the other one it's what it looks like on, I think it's an iPhone 5 or iPhone 4. Um, so you can see the behavior difference there. And if I want to go and see what it looks like in a tablet, you just kind of scroll down. These things are all built in. So you know, I got a little bit different uh, display here. It's, it's actually, I've got some, some responsive design breakpoints in here that, that uh, change the layout a little bit. So if I had this in my, in my uh, application, or when I was doing my work, I would have been a much happier programmer. Okay, a couple other cool features that, that you get out of the box with this thing, um, which also make your life easier. It has a scroll sync, so if you're working on a website, mine doesn't have scrolling, vertical scrolling, but if you're working on a website that has vertical scrolling, you can scroll one pane of that and see what it looks like on the other side because both panes will scroll the same amount. So you can see what it looks like um, as you're scrolling up and down in that without having to, to play any games. Um, the other cool thing, which, which I find is really useful, is this auto refresh. So if you're running, if you've loaded up uh, a, a site that is running on your local machine, you can have it monitor files and automatically refresh whenever something changes. And I can't do that because my back end, my development back end is apparently is broken. But um, earlier, you know, I just went and changed some CSS and saved it and then go back to Blisk and it loads up the website again and with the new, the new changes. So any file that changes, you can see here what I've got. I've got it watching, um, watching here, right? Let me see if I can open that up. So it's, so it's watching files in my, in my UI folder. So I think that would, would have, if I had had this tool back six months ago, would have made my life a heck of a lot easier. So that's the first thing I wanted to point to, to bring to your attention is the Blisk. Um, they are in the process, this is basically new, they're in the process of adding new features to it. So they promise that they'll have screenshots. So you can just click a button and take a screenshot of your mobile device and your full screen uh, at the same time. Uh, video capture, so if you're, if you're working on some weird bug that that only happens when you click a particular element on the mobile device to capture it. And other things that, that probably will come along before too long here. Um, one thing to know is that the JavaScript engine behind the mobile device is what's in Chrome, it's, it's WebKit, right? 
So it's not, if you emulate like an iPhone 4, you're not gonna get the JavaScript behavior that happens in an iPhone 4. You're gonna get the JavaScript from Chrome. And they're working on, I think they're working on um, making that more like the device that you're actually in, you know, that you're viewing here. All right. So if you if you click on on this, you would get, you know, whatever. I ran into some issues with, yeah, okay. Um, I ran into some issues with behavior on on a particular device that wasn't obvious. You can go into Chrome and you can emulate the devices, kind of what, like what you're doing here. But the behavior on a real phone is different, and I ran into that a number of times. So it's something to keep in mind. Uh, eventually that might come up. Okay, the other thing I wanted to show you Sorry, is, oh yeah. On that screen, when you've got the side-by-side -side thing, yeah. do you still have access to the dashboard? Yeah. Oh, okay. um, you do, they, okay. don't, they don't dock, they, they float. Okay. Um, and I think they're only connected to the full browser pane. Okay. Oh, sorry. Um, they have a uh, landscape mode as well? Or is it That's coming. Okay. Okay. Cool. It's, it's not there yet. It's one of their thing that most people are asking for. It, yeah, I was looking for that too, and they just don't have it. Um, yeah. Okay. And, and I didn't intend to talk about this, but these two examples both came up on things that I was reading today. Um, this is a page, so, so I, I don't, I don't push CSS, because we're also about CSS, right? Um, yeah. So, so all of these examples here are CSS on a single div. So I just thought that was really cool. It, it's amazing when you go to reach for that, that JavaScript animation think first, maybe you can do this all in CSS. Um, and whoever, whoever put this together is an amazing artist. But, uh, you know, lightsabers and yeah. So anyway, um, I think that the CSS capabilities that we have available to us today have come a long ways from, and, and CSS is almost 20 years old now. The other thing that I ca really caught my eye is is this uh, thing. So if you if you if you turn it off, this is like a, a checkbox, right? And if you don't like something, you leave it gray. If you do like something, you, you set it to red. But you can see the behavior there. And there's no JavaScript at all. In fact, there's just a, a label and a checkbox element. That's it. You can see here. Uh, ding, ding, ding. Right? This is the entire HTML markup, and there is no JavaScript at all. And I thought that was just freaking amazing. <laughs> that you can get that much behavior without any code at all. So don't always reach for JavaScript when you have cool animations and things you want to do. And that's what I had. So.